Well, shares of Oracle surging in pre-market trading after reporting a nearly 50% growth in its cloud business. Strong order expansion driven by AI demand is really driving this story. The move in the stock that we're seeing up just about 12% in the pre-market. We want to bring in Gil Loria. He is DA Davidson's managing director. Gil, let's just toss it to you. Just your first reaction to these blowout numbers and the stock reaction that we're seeing this morning. Boy, are they glad they got the GPU allocation <laughs> from NVIDIA. That's really the key here is that they got a lot of those GPUs early from NVIDIA. They've been able to deploy them in data centers and then really rent them out to a lot of other software companies and enterprises trying to develop new generative AI tools. Even before that, they were growing this cloud business at a rapid rate. They're the disruptor here. Ironically, Oracle really old software company that, that it has a, a much slower growing legacy business, but in the hyperscaler business, they're their disruptor. Uh, they're growing from a small base, but they're growing very fast. What's the return that Oracle could potentially see on all of these data centers now that they're building out? They, I mean, Larry Ellison really went to town on that on the call. Well, the, the key phrase you used is right now. The excitement is huge right now. Everybody wants to experiment. All software companies, technology companies, and their customers want to experiment with generative AI. So the returns are terrific, and that's why they're deploying these data centers as fast as they can. The question's going to be about follow through. Once we actually have tools and it takes time to implement them, is there going to be follow through and, and more and more applications built? That we'll have to see, but right now the returns are terrific. Is it enough to say that you think some of this growth and this demand is lends itself to, for investors to believe that is more durable than maybe many had thought heading into this print? In this business, it is, right? Mm -hmm. So in the OCI business, the Oracle Cloud hyperscaler business, they've been able to establish growth over the last couple of years, and generative AI is an additional tailwind. The question is, the rest of their business is either slower growing or in some cases even declining. And it's the balance between those two that's gonna determine Oracle's path. So if for as excited as we are about 50% Oracle uh, cloud growth, overall Oracle grew 7% and they guided to four to 6% revenue growth. So the slower growing businesses are still dragging it down. Now they expect that growth to accelerate from here and they're even implying they could grow double digits within a couple of years but really the burden of proof is on them to show that that is possible. When we think about the deal sizes that companies like Oracle or other cloud companies are talking about, how, how long can they sustain some of the deals that are coming through? We were just talking with George Kurtz, the, the CrowdStrike CEO last week about some of the sizes of the deals that they're seeing come through, but cybersecurity is a very hot landscape right now. AI also a very hot landscape. So there's more demand for some of these services that an Oracle or a CrowdStrike might be putting out there into the market and that customers who might not have full knowledge of how much it's actually going to pass through to their business and be beneficiary, they're just willing to spend on it and say, okay, we'll figure it out as we go along. But how long can that take place? Well, that's right. That's the environment we're in right now. There's such a scarcity of capacity for hyperscalers, for data centers, for generative AI capabilities that customers are willing to make long-term commitments right now in order to secure that capacity right now and into the future. We'll see if that follows through, if they have enough need and enough uh, sustained activity to justify that long-term spend. We'll find out in a year or two when we see if these applications actually work, how much productivity they're adding, if everybody is deploying them broadly. Right now, they're willing to make those long-term commitments, which is why Oracle's remaining performance obligation, which is a great view of mm -hmm. future backlog, was up hugely over last year, up almost 28%. Yeah, it's very much, uh, if it if you build it, they will come, uh, as it's been right now. So uh, we'll see how the data center business uh, and the build out of some of what they described as data centers that you can essentially fit 10 Boeing 747s inside of. I mean, that that's just the visual picture that they were describing on the call here. What most notably for any investor, perhaps, who is considering Oracle this morning, should they remember about both the near-term viability and also some of the long-term and, and the barometer at which or how they should measure up against 
uh, Oracle here? Well, I think the key thing to remember is that Amazon, Amazon Web Services is 10 times the size of OCI and is getting far more business from generative AI right now. So, so we would remind people that this is great growth, it's impressive, but it's much smaller base. The real dominant players right now is Microsoft mm. and they've gotten a lot of credit for it. Amazon Web Services is even bigger and as they emerge within the generative AI uh, facilitation space, they're gonna be the bigger player and it's worth keeping uh, an eye on that. Gil, thanks so much for adding some context to this and breaking down the Oracle numbers here with us, plus this reaction that we're seeing pre-market. Gil Loria, who is the DA Davidson Managing Director. Thanks so much.